Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, just turn around and pick it up. You don't have to sit down. You're already up. Praise the Lord. Somebody said we're already up. Save a little bit of energy. I'm ready to preach. I've been sitting in Pastor David, a friend of mine in North Carolina, and I say, I'm sitting on the ready. I've been sitting on the ready all week. I'll share this verse in a minute. It's like a fire shut up in my bones, and i got to get it out. We're about ready to get it out because I believe. I believe wholeheartedly, and Pastor Trey could not have said it any better, we are sitting on a threshold of something great. Yes. Whether it happens today, tomorrow, in your life, tomorrow, on the way home, or before we get out of here today, I do not care, but I know it's coming in the name of the Lord. Yes. Because I'm standing on 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, starting at verse 1. The Bible says this, When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in the whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way in Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, the Lord has sent you to Bethel. But Elijah said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets of Bethel came out to Elijah and asked, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elijah replied, so replied, should be quiet. Jump down to verse 7. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elijah had stopped at the Jordan. The Bible said Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left. And the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me, what can I do for you before I'm taken from you? Here's Elijah's response. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. Somebody say double portion. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. Verse 10. You asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and a horse of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in the whirlwind. Elijah saw it as he cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elijah saw him no more. Then he took hold of the garment and tore, took hold of his garments and tore it into it. Verse 13, Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? He asked. When he struck the water, your Bible and my Bible says, it divided to the right and it divided to the left and it crossed over. Are you hearing me this morning? The fire of God is for you and I if we want it. If we ask for it. If we call the name of the Lord, it is there. Church, let me tell you, serving God has put a fire in me that no man can put out. There's a passion, there's an overwhelming desire to be about His work. And for me personally, and I, I can speak for you, I'm sure that there is nothing greater than being in the middle of His plan, being in the middle of His will, knowing God is leading and directing or following His shadow. We sense His presence all along the way. No matter what comes, we know God is saying, follow me and I will show you the way. Everything you do, everything you say, everywhere you go. This morning, I'm going to preach you for, for a very few moments on this thought. The fire of God is it in you. Look to your neighbor and say, the fire of God is it in you. Look to him and say, it's the fire of God is it in you. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray this morning. Father, God, you have shown up and I know you haven't left. So there's no sense in re-inviting you here. You're, you're sitting right here, right in the midst of your church. God, I ask that the word that you've so placed in my spirit, I can deliver it to your people the way you yes. want me to, Father. Yes. Lord, I'm excited because I want the fire in me. I want to burn for you, Lord. I, I want nothing yes. greater than to be your firehouse, Lord. Yes. Where people come from miles and miles and miles to see what's going on because you yes. set us on fire. Yes. Lord, God, if there be any person in this room this morning that does not have it, does not know what we're talking about, Lord, and they want it before they walk out of this building this morning, in the name of Jesus, you will light them up. God, you will light them up, Father. They will sense your presence in your life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated in the house of God this morning. The fire of God. The fire of God is in you. There's, there's two verses 
There's two verses that I want to hang on to for the next couple of weeks, and I want you to listen to them. Luke chapter 12, verse 49. He, we briefly spoke about this Wednesday night, and it's a commercial. You missed Wednesday night. You missed an incredible service. We, we walked you through the center. We called down God. He came and He visited us. Things are happening in this church. We're getting prepared. But Luke chapter 12 says, I came to send fire on the earth. And how I wish it were already kindled. Oh, Lord. Do you see that? He says, Jesus says, I have come to bring fire on the earth. And man, do I wish they were ready for it. Man, do I wish their hearts were kindled. Now I want you to take that verse home. It speaks a lot of things. That passage of scripture does talk about judgment. But I want you to catch something. God is saying, I'm about ready to do something. I want to send a fire to my people. And I want you to be ready for it. And Hebrews chapter 12 says, our God is what? An all-consuming fire. Yes, yes. He's all consuming. I mean, it doesn't, there's not a thing around him, around you, around I that God does not see, that he cannot handle. Our God is an all consuming fire. Yes, 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 yes. So the question is the fire God is it in you? For as I can tell you, I want nothing more than to see God in our city, to see God in our community, where yes. people are serving and worshiping him like it used to be back in the day, back in the Old Testament, yes. back when people didn't care. They just wanted to worship God because of who he was. Friends, I want to see where there's an overabundance of His grace, an overabundance of His flowing mercy that just, it comes down the aisles of our homes and our business places and our, and our workplaces at schools, wherever we are, in an uncontrollable fashion. We can't even stop it. We just allow it to saturate us. I've been talking about it for weeks, but I believe the choice is up to you and I. It, it completely rests in us if we're going to be the one to say, I want to take it on. I want to do that. Like Isaiah says, Lord, here I am. Send me. I want to be filled with your power. I want to be filled with your anointing. Thank you, Lord. See, the problem is, you ready for this? The problem is too many people, too many Christians set up for less. Yeah, we, yeah. we rather be a part-time Pentecostal. Are you listening to me this morning? We, we want to be Jesus when we're supposed to, but when things aren't going right, but we like to complain and whine about it. But Jesus is saying, I do not want to be part-time Pentecostals. I want a full-time employee. Two years ago, or a little over two years ago, we preached the message about being a, a, a part-time Pentecostal. And this past week, that has come back to my mind. And I said, Lord, do you want me to preach it again? And I, I felt convicted in my spirit. We need to share parts of it. So maybe next week or the week after, we're going to do it again. But I want you to hear me. The title will be a little bit different. Not part-time Pentecostal. Because Wednesday night, as I was walking around and had messages in my heart, God said, I want you to tell no time for part-time is what he's asking. Are you hearing me?
to be a bond so you can bind up the broken hearted, so you can proclaim freedom for the captives, so you can release from darkness the prisoners. The prisoners. And here's the great thing you can proclaim to your neighbors is the year of God's favor. How many want to see God's favor in 2014? Just, just because all of this is right in the corner doesn't mean anything. The year is half over. God may not show up. Hey, He can show up when we get out of here today. I know I don't care about the day. Year of the Lord's favor. I'm standing in it. I'm proclaiming it. And whether he shows up doesn't make any difference. I'm going to continue to proclaim. If next year rolls around, I'm going to preach the very same word. That this is the year that God will understand it. Some of you are sitting there. You crazy, Pastor. You just loose. Yes, I am. Because I have understood. Oh, I've been here long enough. I have understood that there is something great when I serve a God who loves me. Come on, somebody. I know that when I stand behind the word of God, when I listen to what he has to say and follow through with him, I know he's going to pour out his yes, yes, I know it. And I'm going to stand it. We, we ended up, we ended up Wednesday night standing up here, standing around the altar, begin to proclaim, this is where God's going to send his fire right here. He's going to burn up the altar place. You read all throughout the scripture. Where does God send his fire? He sends it right on the altar. Why don't we lay our sacrifices? Why don't we lay our issues down? God, you need to burn this thing up because I'm going to be real for you. See here, we need the anointing of God to become what he's called us to be. Real simple, what is the anointing? It's the enabling. It's the empowering. Yeah, it's giving you the resources to do what God has called you yeah, to do. Yeah. It's not a, just a big old, we, I, I remember growing up hearing all kind of weird stories about the anointing. What it is when God put his hand and said, I have called you to do something. Now I'm going to touch you and you are able to do what I called you to do. Yeah. How can I do it? I don't know, but God has anointed me yeah. to speak the truth. God has anointed me to speak boldly the truth. God has anointed me to be the man he's called me to be. And he's yeah. anointed yeah. you if you allow him to be the same way. For his kingdom, for his glory, for the fire of God to rest on each of us. The anointing of God is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. He flows with the river of love and the throne of grace through hearts of believers, bringing life and energy and mercy to anybody that comes in contact. Yesterday, I, or whatever day, I went to go pick up some pizza from all of these for my kids coming home. And I, I walked in there and I was about three or four behind. And the only thing that house was pizza and this lady has some stuff in the front and I, I looked off to the distance. There are two elderly people trying to get a water bottle thing from the top that couldn't do it. So I looked at this lady and said, hold my pizza. And she looked at me real strange like, what do you mean? I said, hold my pizza. I've got something to do. So I just kind of shoved it at her and I walked. She didn't have no choice. She just kind of had to have it. And I walked over and I pulled down this big old water for this elderly couple that couldn't do it by themselves and put it in their car. Bless you, brother. Bless you, brother. And I walked back over and said, thank you for holding my pizza. That's the best thing you've ever could have done for somebody. I said, I didn't do it. The Lord told me to do it. Amen. And you, you should have seen her eyes go, Amen. what does that mean? It means God has strategically positions us like we talked about it last week. He strategically places us if we're allowed to be used by Him for His glory, for His power, and for His anointing to fall out. I want to go back to my point. I'm looking for this guy on Sunday. Remember I told you a story when I dropped off my band a couple of times and I told this guy invited him to church. He has yet to be here. He's going to come because he has bumped into me more this past week. And I said, I want to go back in my band. I'm back in my band. He drives up BB. We talk. I said, I'm looking for you to come on Sunday. Oh, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'm looking for you. I might just have to go find him where he lives and go beep outside his house and say, I'm waiting on you. You took too long. Here I am. But God is, God is putting us in places, in positions where the fire of God can fall. I better get back to my notes. Four comments I want you to hear Charles Spurgeon says about fire. Are you okay if you go a little bit longer today? If you're visiting with us, that's just a question out of courtesy. It means nothing. <laughs> if you know me well enough, you got to go, you go ahead and go. But I, I've got just a couple more pages. 45 minutes, 50, 60, 60. About two and a half hours, we'll be done at the same time. Y'all are like, man, you picked the wrong Sunday. Yes, you did. <laughs> Charles Spurgeon has a couple comments. Number one, he says this. Set yourself on fire. And people will come from miles around 
to watch you burn. Amen. Amen. You hear that? Set yourself on fire. And the Bible, and he says, people will come for miles to watch you burn. Here's another one. He says, listen to this. He says, are we a church on fire? Not really. We are extreme, we are an extremely warm church, but the warmth of friendship is not the same as fire of God. Amen. 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 Some of y'all just caught that. Right? Oh, yeah. The warmth of friendship is not the same as the fire of God. Amen. When the fire of God begins to fall, it's going to make you uncomfortable. Okay. Look at your neighbor say, uncomfortable. It's going to make you twitch a little bit. It's going to make you a little bit uncomfortable because the fire of God begins to burn these things that don't go on. Here's another one. God does it, does not. God does it like churches. He likes individuals like the little Pentecost. Amen. You've heard us say that. We're not putting a sign out in front that says, First have a revival. God takes care of it individually. And in the course of time, this church is going to bust it open. Because we understand what God is doing. And lastly, the disciples were set on fire individually. Then there was a church on fire. That's what I'm expecting. That's what I want to see take place. So, my introduction is out of the way. How do we get this anointing we're talking about? How do we get this fire? Three things. Somewhat quickly. Number one is the request. You have yes. to ask for it. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. You gotta ask for it. Yes, sir. Elisha said, This is what I would like. Elisha, what do you want? Lord, Elisha, this is what I want, Elisha. I want a double portion of your yes. spirit. Yes. Church, there are times you've got to ask God for yes. it. Yes. Uh, the prayer of Jabez. Oh Lord, would you bless me indeed? That's his prayer request. Yes. I'm not content. Yes. Well, I want a double portion of the spirit. Yes. He says, this is what I want. We see here, as we begin to read the text that we did, you realize that you can ask of God what you want, but the decision totally rests in the will of God. Yes. He could say no. He could say yes. He could say maybe. Or he could say maybe later. Or maybe not. But we want things right this very moment. I know I do. But there are times God says, just chill for just a second. I've got to get something Amen. fixed first. You need to be brave and say, Lord, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want a double portion of your spirit. We were walking around here Wednesday. I kept saying that in my heart. Lord, I'm, I'm thankful for what you're doing. God, I, I, I love what you're doing to me. But God, I want more. I want a double portion. I want, what, I want a double portion of what Elisha had. I want that where I walk, things split. I want to walk where I lay hands on people. They're set free. I want to speak that when things come into some contact with someone in their heart, their lives are changed because I want your spirit inside of me. I won't leave here until I get it. That's my heart. I won't leave here. I say, Lord, I don't want to walk away until I've got what I've come for. See, unfortunately, too many Christians, we come so long, we quit, we give up. I'm not going to leave here until I've got what I've come for. My mind, it goes to the story of Jacob when he wrestled with the angel. How many know that story? He did not, I repeat, he did not let go until he got what he came for. He said, I'm not letting you go. I came to get my power. I came to get the anointing. I came to get my blessing, somebody. I came to get me. And the Bible says that the angel touched him on his side. And, and your Bible says he has a limit. Yes. I, I call it a Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? You, you just talk like you got it going on, right? You, you just, it's not that you're arrogant. It's because God touched you, so you walk around more through some pride. Look what I got. God touched me. I'm dragging a little bit, but that's okay. Because God is inside of me. And I've got something inside of my spirit and no man can take away from me. Is any of this resting in your spirit this morning? Are you grabbing hold of anything? Of this? You gotta ask for it. You gotta say, Lord, I want this. I will not move till I get it. You ask for it. Secondly, secondly, then you gotta worship the Lord. The threshing for experience. 
uh, we don't like the threshing floor experience super quick. That's when the weedy tears, the grain and the flour and the stuff is what's not good is, is pushed away and the good solid stuff stays. See, we don't like that because there's a process involved in there of weedy tears. There's a process of willowing. There's a process of beating things. We want this to be, oh, Lord, you're just so wonderful and glorious and oh, so majestic. But there's some times God has to be the strength. Come on, I'm, I'm preaching the word. It is those times that we must desire the anointing of God more than anything else. More than anything else. Elisha knew that there was something in Elijah that he wanted. He chose to ask for it and he chose to seek it. Amen. Friends, we must have an overwhelming want. Oh, yeah. An overwhelming want to have all there is from God. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm not satisfied today with what was yesterday. Thank you, Lord. And believe me, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to say, man, yesterday was great, but I want more. Yes, I'm not happy yeah. with it. I, I said Wednesday night when we got out of here, man, it would be great if we could do this every single Wednesday night. And it would be. But I pray it would get bigger and bigger yeah. and yeah. better and better. Oh. But it's not about me. It's not about the musicians. It's not about, it's about us bringing in our heart. And saying, like, like we said a moment ago, as Trey mentioned, Lord, I want to be in your threshing floor. Lord, I want to see you. But I'm not coming empty-handed. I'm coming with a sacrifice. I'm coming with an offering. I'm coming with stuff that is real to me that I have to deny myself. I've got to get rid of some stuff because I want to serve you. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hmm. we got to find the side to say, I want all there is and I won't leave this place until I get it. God, to say, I give myself to you, Lord. I'm surrendering myself over to you. We got to sit there and say, I give myself away, Lord. I can't do it myself. I'm just taking my hands up and I'm giving myself to you. Here you go, Lord. Take it. Take it. Take all of me, Lord. Make me what you want to be. We have to have that worship experience in our hearts. Lord, I understand that when you get into that position, church, listen to me. When you get into that place of worship, place of genuine worship, you will find out there is so much power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the worship we laid off the Lord. Are you hearing this morning? Do you hear? You wonder why you get up and you might be a little bit tired, but all of a sudden you've got more spiritual strength about you. Go ahead, then I'm ready. And and you get all excited because you have worshipped the Lord with all of your heart, and God begins to fill the inside of you, and you are ready to do it all over again. Because you worship Him from the bottom of your heart. You ask for the worship. Thirdly. Then there's action. This is sometimes when we fall short. We see where Elisha grabbed the cloak. He grabbed the mantle that had fallen from the ground. This, this transformation from Elijah to Elisha was made complete in that moment. I want you to hear that mantle, that cloth that was a symbol of, of the authority of the prophets. And, and it was a physical element of God's power. Elisha received it because he asked for it. Through a, a, a pure heart, a right spirit. Let me remind you, this, this mantle, this cloth, did not carry the power. It just represented the power. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to wear stuff around me that represents His power. Yeah. I, I want to walk with His power. I, I know it's not me. I know I can't do it. I, I wish I could, but I know I can't. But I know I can put God's power on me. I can take His cloak. I can take His robe. I can take His mercy. And I can walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. See, the Bible says in Psalms that we could rest under the shadow of the Almighty. Now look for me too. I'll be under your shadow, baby. And I can walk in power. And I can walk in authority because I know God says, you just stay right next to me. Everything's going to be okay. But I've got to take action. I can't just, can't just hang out and hope it comes to me. Come on, somebody. See, I believe there are times you've got to do something. That's why you hear us, and I, I'll say this openly, that's why you hear us so much tell you, get out from your pew and yeah. make a move. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to come all the way down to the altar? Not necessarily, but you've got to move somehow. Some of us like to run. Some of us like to shout and dance and get weak for Jesus. That's okay. Some of us like to be quiet and calm. That's great too. But you've got to do an action. Say, Lord, I saw it fall. When is it going to get up and get around my neck, Lord? I prayed for it and there it is. Now how am I going to get it? You, you, you following me? How am I going to get it? How, how, is that, how is that cloth going to get around my neck, Lord? You are gracious enough to drop it. What do you think? I think I should 
come down and pick it up. What do you think? And the moment he picked it up, that power came over him. How do you know? Because he rolled up to someone. Boom, it's done. There's power when you believe in what Jesus says. The fire of God will fall. I, I tell you, I believe it's in my heart. I'm going to drive into church one day. And I'm going to see a fire resting over the top of this building. I, I, I know it. Spiritually, I know it's going to happen. I know I'm going to walk in it, but it's a cloud by day and fire by night. However you believe it, however you see it, doesn't make a difference. But we're going to see God represented yeah. over yeah. this tabernacle, yeah. over this sanctuary, over this place. Why? Because we believe in who God is. Yeah. Yeah. That His mantle will rest yeah. on this place. And, and we briefly mentioned last week, talking about His mantle falling. I believe that there are people in this room this morning that have talents and abilities and things you can do that have not even been tapped into Amen. Amen. Some of you are probably sitting in your pew right now and you're thinking, man, I wish I could do this, or I wish I could do that ministry. God is telling you to do this. He's directing you to do this. All you need to do is come to myself or Pastor Trace or Pastor Scott and say, hey, and we will find a place to put you to work. Because if God has called you, it's far from me to get in the way of God, what God wants. Are you listening to me? Maybe, maybe you say, well, that's outside of my comfort zone. I can't do this. I can't do that. Ask God. See if he can't help you out. Amen. You follow me this morning? When you ask for things that have a pure heart, when you say, Lord, I want everything there is for you, guess what? He puts his Holy Ghost fire in you. Yeah, let's go. Let's and through that, we are capable of doing great and mighty things. Amen. I, I could not stand in front of you this morning if you weren't for the power of the Holy Ghost. I could not do it. I would choose not to do it. But I thank God I have it because He can equip me and empower me yeah. and enable yeah. me to do what I do. One of, one of my favorite verses in the Bible about fire and, and eternal combustion. Listen, we'll get this thing. But one of my favorite verses. But first, listen. Once we have been touched by the Spirit, have you been touched by the Spirit of God? Yeah. Great, Father. Once we get touched by the Spirit of God, I'll pray for more. Everything changes. Are you listening? Everything changes. You are unable to contain it. For me, I believe it is 100% totally impossible to be touched by God and not change. Amen. Pastor Trey and I had a real good conversation this past week about certain delicate issues of how people view themselves and whether they're Christian or not. And we begin to talk and... and, and, and I, I, we, we had a good healthy discussion, but I, I still go back to this. You can call yourself a Christian and in any lifestyle you want to. This is to be very careful. But if it's not acceptable by the Word of God, it's not accepted by God Himself. Are you hearing me? And because we can say, well, I'm a Christian and I'm a lying Christian because I lie all the time. Are you listening to me? Or I'm just a every once in a while stealing, every once in a while fornicating. Every once in a while, adults are just, I drink every once in a while, and I don't get drunk because the Bible says this, but every once in a while, I'm not an alcoholic Christian, but I'm just a Christian, but I drink, right? Just a smoke. You can do what you want. If you want to call yourself Christian, you better line up with the word. You're in trouble. Are you listening to me? It, it comes down to a commitment level between you and the Lord. I want you to hear me. I believe that God is separating things as I'm speaking right now. I believe He is He's just drawing that line saying, either you are in, you are out. I'm tired of playing. I believe God is saying, I'm tired of playing. I'm trying to allow you to do what you think you can do. I think you're going to be all right. You want me to bless you? Then you better start walking right. You want to do what I want you to do? You better start acting right. Because we think we got it all together. And it blows up and we wonder what happened. Yes, yes. And God says, because you are with me. Amen. You are not with me. You're professing to be a Christian, but you're not walking like a Christian. Amen. Remember, we said last week, Acts 2. 1 John 2 says, I should have just favorite verse in the Bible. Oops. If you claim to have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you walk as he did. Yes. Remember I said, if you talk the talk, you better walk the walk. Amen. Amen. I see a lot of people walking around calling themselves Christians, lifting their hands. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the other church. No one in here. No one in here. Nobody. That's on video. Nobody in this church. Don't look at your neighbor. Look straight. I ain't talking to nobody in here. We profess to be on fire, Bible-leaving, prophesying, hopping, skipping, whatever you got to be a Christian. But come Monday, you wouldn't know it. Can I get real for just a moment? 
Don't hate me for this. Don't hate me for this. I'll say it one more time. Yeah, Lakita, don't hate me for this. I know jobs and distance are two things. This is my heart. This is not even my notes. You go to my notes. I'm telling you the truth. This is my heart. I don't understand why we love the Jesus we say we love so much. Two things. We can't get here on time, and we can't come to Wednesday night service. It's not going to Now, you can deal with it however you want to. I'm not putting you down. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. I'm, I'm just asking you questions because God is challenging me. Amen. How can you? How can you? How can you? You still love me? I hope so. Yeah. 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 I don't know, Pastor. We'll let you know. Finish your service. We'll see what time we get out. And we'll let you know. <laughs> but the idea here is so true. We want to say we love them. We want the fire of God. Oh, God, fill us, fill us. No, I can't volunteer. No, I can't get on time. I can't come in. I can't do that. Lord, but I want all of your spirit. But I can't do anything you're asking. But God says, I want to fill you with everything I have. I cannot for the life be understand. When God touches you, everything changes. You want to be devoted to him. You want to be sold out to him. Nothing else should matter but him. It's like Jeremiah. Here's my verse. But if I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name. His word is in my heart like a fire that's shut up in my bones. I have to let it out. I can't keep it in. How can I say I love Jesus and I keep him all hanged up to myself? How can I say I love Jesus and I can't sit up out and help a brother or sister? How can I say I love Jesus when it comes down to needing help? Oh, I can't do that. I can't do this. See, Jesus should be so on fire you that you are looking for opportunities to help someone. You are looking for opportunities to bless a soul. You are looking for times when the fire of God can fill your heart. Let's much less shouting when we preach a real hard truth and not just heart where we live. Yeah, yeah. But that's the truth. Amen. I've been reading Isaiah for the past several days in a chronological Bible reading thing app. And I don't know what it's called, but that's where I'm at. And if you begin to really listen to what Isaiah says, he is challenging the socks off of you. Amen. And he's bringing it right down to the meat of things. He said, I'm going to destroy. I'm going to snuff out. I'm going to get rid of all these things. If you're not so up to me. I, I could not see myself sitting under Isaiah and being happy. I would have a hard time wanting to come back the next week because Isaiah would make me nervous. But the idea is the end of the story is we know we're better for it. Come on, somebody. We're much better for it because we are sold out to him. Let me get on. Let me get on. Some of y'all get nervous. Let me get on. There is a stirring in my spirit, friends. There is a real genuine stirring in my heart. We need to fully anticipate a real genuine move of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our homes, and in our church place. We must have that fire shut up on our bones attitude that's God, I want it now, and I'm not going to walk away until I get it. I'm going to stay plugged in. Can you imagine how great it would be next week if we all came in with a heart of revival asking God for his anointing? We wake up every single morning. Lord, I want all there is from you. I don't care where you get it. I don't care how. I'm not moving until I get it. And we will see a community change. I believe that. I believe we will see a church change. I believe we see moms and dads and family members that don't know Jesus change and caught on fire with him. We begin to commit ourselves to him in our homes, in our lives, in our workplaces, even in our workplaces, even in our workplaces. It's the last place sometimes we want to mention the name of Jesus. But that's where he needs to be mentioned. How awesome would that be that the new topic around the water cooler would not be Manziel and LeBron. It would be about signs and wonders. Amen. Amen. Is LeBron going to wear number 6 or number 23? I don't know. I don't care. I'm waiting for number 7 to come out of heaven and fill me with his whole throat. in different situations that don't know Jesus. Those are huge, big, powerful ministries. Because if we don't do what God has called us to do, I believe the church will begin to crumble because God has told us to go out and make disciples. Go 
want to speak the word of God, speak the truth to them. And the only way that comes is we start claiming the power and the fire of God in our spirit. We stand up and say, God, I'm serious. I'm not playing anymore. I want everything there is for the Lord, and I'm not getting out of here until I get it. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I want everything for the Not only will the anointing flow freely in us, but so will the power of God. So will the power of God. In conclusion, this morning, if our musicians can join us. Friends, I'm not sure about you. you. I can only speak for myself, but I, I am not satisfied where I am right now spiritually. Oh, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. No doubt about it. My ticket has been sent, and I, got it. I know where I'm going. There's no question. But I am not satisfied where I'm spiritually. I thank Lee for singing the songs he did. I told him the direction was one. He chose them. But some of the lyrics and some of those songs, just it gripped me because this is what we're saying. I, 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 want, I can't contain. I can't control. Lord. I want Amen. more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want to give myself away to you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to commit myself to you. See, we want God to do something. I don't know about you, but I want God to do something. Can I just see a show of hands? I really want God to do something. See, when, when we see these hands, and God, I, I want to see you. But yet when God shows up, say, I'm ready. Who wants to go with me? Some of these hands, well, what is it going to entail, Lord? Amen. How, how, how much do I got to give up? What commitment do I got to make? See, that's the question. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Are you able to say, I give myself away? Or are you able to make that commitment to the Lord? See, I believe there's much more to come. I believe this church has the potential to do greater things than it's ever done in the past. I, I've heard great stories. I mentioned it weekly, it seems like. But I know God has done some, some awesome things in this church over the years. I hear about it. Hear stories about it. I, I know what the Bible said happened in Acts chapter 2 when thousands came to find the Lord. I hear that. I want something for here and now for this church, for this time. See, where I can stand up and say, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because, see, the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives, to release from darkness the prisons, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's faith. So here's the question to you. The fire of God is in you. The fire of God is in you. That verse we go back to. Luke chapter 12, 49. I, I'm, I'm going to set my fire in the earth. And your wishes are to kid you. I'm not a real good fire starter. My wife will tell you. I got to get the cheek off. Have a little wrapping. You light it and it goes. You feel like you're going to break it. She can start a fire out of air, almost. I don't have that talent. But as I begin to think about that contrast, some of us need help to get it going. Some of us are self-starters. Some of us, however, there's no killing anything. No good. Matter of fact, the laws are just completely soft and wet. And even if the Lord wanted to start a fire, there's some things that need to be fixed first. There's nothing about matter with that. Just be honest. God, I'm a, I'm a wet, soppy mess. I want to catch on fire, but Lord, you need to take your torch and dry me out first. Then, get that dross raised. Get that imperfection cured out first. Are you hearing anything I'm telling you this morning? Don't think for a moment God may challenge me before I preach this. I preached this message four or five times this week, including twice already now today. Told Lee, I came here for he was. He couldn't sleep. Nope. Had to come preach this message to the to Make sure they understood. And we had a good day. The fire of God is in him. I don't want this to be a hype message. I don't want this to be a message that y'all fired up. Oh God. I want this to be a message that Lord, I need more of you in me. I give myself to you. Every head bowed and I close just for a moment.